Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here on Sammy Taramina blog around the OAA, the host of the last three brain cells and the host between Tim Minutes on Orient Radio Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Orient Radio Television. A lot to talk about this week here. Obviously, the... Um, we're looking at a, a lot to really look at to digest this past weekend. Um, the district matchups have been released for boys basketball. We're going to preview each of those. Um, we're also going to look at the girls basketball district formula and where is the outlook for each team when it comes to the formula. And also our big story here over at Seahome, of course, um, Mike DeGeter um, was let go at um, Seahome. Um, after 10 years coaching the program, um, we're going to break that down and what is the implications for Seahome going forward. So a lot to look at on this week's podcast here. Um, really, the big story here has to be, of course, Coach DeGeter um, being let go at Seahome. Um, a lot of conflicting reports around there. Um, it was confirmed by Brendan Foss from Hometown Life, who um, announced on Saturday that the Geeter was let go from Seahome. Um, it was unknown why he was forced out. I don't, I don't know what, what happened over there. I don't know what forced did. I don't know if it was something that was, you know, I don't know if it was something that, you know, um, that was related to something. I don't know. I mean, like I can't verify it. I know Seahome can't comment on it. Um, but, Something happened after that Bloopy Hills game um, to when um, this action was taken. I mean, he did not coach in the um, on the Saturday game against Bloopy Hills. Of course, his um, assistant coach, longtime assistant coach Will Bronner, who was named the interim coach, took over that um, took over as the interim coach. So and and they played in that game on Saturday where um, Bloopy Hills won that one fifty to thirty seven. Um, Holding Seaholm to just 13 points in the um, second half, which is just mind-boggling considering the season that they've had. Um, obviously, when you look at coaching changes, especially midseason, um, you know, you, there's going to have to be an adjustment period. And that's happened during the year. Um, but in this case, this happened so late that... That um it it, it just it, it was it's surprising to see that um that this took place. Um that you know, I mean like you gotta look at okay, what what was going on over there, what was going on that whole week. I mean, you gotta wonder what happened. Um and you know, and I'm not gonna speculate what happened, but something did happen over there and you know, and that led to the Geeter being forced out. So I'm not going to go into depth around it. I mean, like, um, but, um, you know, that's, I mean, like, but still, I mean, something really happened over there um, that led to his ouster. So so now what does this do for Seahome's program? Um, I don't know. Because you play Troy for your final game of the year. And then you got to rematch Boompy Hills in the first round. Um, you have not done well against Boompy Hills this season. Um, so if you're Coach Bronner, you're going to have a tough challenge ahead of you. But then you also got to wonder, too, is, you know, what happens after the season. You got to also wonder what happens. Because you don't know if... if you don't know what the direction of the program is going to be. You don't know where, how the direction is going to be. You don't know where, um, you know, things are going to lie. I mean, you have a good freshman team coming. You have a good freshman class. Um, you got talented players in that class. Your sophomore class is solid. I mean, you know, your junior class isn't bad. I mean, it's just, when I look at Seahome, and, you know, you look at the direction. Where is it going to go? I mean, you don't know where it's going to go. I mean, I don't know. 
do they, you know, obviously you look at, you know, the Gators record in the last 10 years. I mean, like, um, 83 and 126. Um, he did lead them to a, to a league title last year. They won the blue. Um, so you got to wonder the direction. Where, where do they go? I mean, where does Sehome go? You know, will they post the job? Will they keep it in-house? Um, you know, and I, and you don't have much time left with the season being over, you know, this week and then the postseason starting off next week. So, you know, so it was a, this was just a really, really terrible time, um, when it comes to timing, you know, for this to happen. Um, but, you know, but, um, you know, you got to look at, you got to look at from, there's always two sides of story when it comes to, um, you know, when it comes to changing coaches, always two sides to every story with what happened. I mean, you can believe one side, you can believe another side. I mean, there's always going to be two sides to every story. So, but the direction of Seahome basketball, boys basketball, is... I think really concerning going forward because now you don't have a coach in place. You don't have like, you look at obviously the structure of the Birmingham school district, um, you know, considering, you know, I think it's open enrollment within the school district. Um, it's really, it's an interesting <coughs> job for, you know, for a new coach to go in there. I mean, do they stay in house? I mean, do they do they give Will Bronner the um permanent tag? Do they go to Sean Smith, who was their J V coach this year? He's done a really good job with you know, he's been with the freshman program, let the JVs having a nice year. I mean, there's so many avenues to where CM could go with their um coaching church. Um it's going to be interesting to see how the um, athletic department evaluates Bronner, um, especially in the last two games. Um, and then you have the postseason matchup against um, against Bloomfield Hills, and if they win that one, then likely having to see Birmingham Brother Rice in the district semis. Um, either this is a really, really tough situation. I mean, obviously, you look at players like um. Jacob Druyard, you look at Finley Sparby, um, you got um, Max Lasky, um, hardworking kids in that program over there. Um, unfortunate, you know, to what happened over there. It's really unfortunate, you know, to have this happen, and especially for half of that team over there. Half that team is senior heavy, and it's their senior year, so... You know, it'll be interesting to see this offseason how Seaholm does, Seaholm approaches this um, with their coaching situation because there is talent there. There is talent. Um, but the big question is going to be is um, does Seaholm, the big question for me is where do they go for their coach? Where do they, you know, because you, I would expect, honestly, a um a complete restructure. I, I expect a complete restructure of the program. Um, considering, you know, I mean, like considering where everything's been. Um, so it'll be interesting to watch. I mean, like um, with everything that's been going on over there, and you know, you can't, you know, you, there's always two sides to every story. But when I look at the future of the program, um. It's in flux right now because of everything that's went on this past weekend. I mean, obviously, you know, now you know that, you know, I mean, like the Geeter's no longer in the picture. Um, we don't know about the assistance yet. We don't know about the JV program. We don't know about the freshman program. There's just so much uncertainty, especially when you make a change in the middle to the end of the year. Um, especially when you don't have the time. I mean, the time is against you right now when you look at Seahome. I mean, like, I mean, like, you look at 
especially with how this was done late in the year. I mean, like, you know, I mean, like, you know, I know athletic directors, they have evaluations after the end of the year. I mean, like, for this to happen at the end of the year, I mean, near the end of the year, you know, it had to be something really troubling, you know what I mean, for them to make this change. So it'll be something to watch. Um, here to see who the new coach will be this offseason. Um, Seaholm's got a really difficult schedule, difficult stretch coming up, especially with them having to play, um, with them having to play, um, you know, Troy this week and then, and then, of course, getting ready for the postseason against Boopy Hills, a team that they've lost it twice in the last week. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this path goes. So we'll see what happens. All right, now let's go to the boys' basketball here. Obviously, um, we're going to talk about the um, the matchups. Of course, they were just posted up on um, Sunday. Um, they released the formula two weeks ago. The girls' formula is up. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a little bit here. Um, obviously, league championships have been have been decided already. Um, Troy winning the white this year. Um, the blue is going to come down to either Oxford or Avondale. Um, and then the red is probably most likely going to be a split between West Bloomfield and North Farmington. So, a lot to really look at and to digest heading into the postseason here. Um, let's look at the, at the matchups first. I mean, like, obviously, when you look at the matchups um, that were posted, I have it on my blog at Saginaw by 4650 at blogspot.com. I also posted a link on the ONTV blog if you want to take a look at that as well. So, let's without further ado, let's look at these matchups. We're going to go to Division Two first. Um, obviously, this will be taking place over at... Um, District 59, this will be over at Detroit Pershing. Um, there's really, you got the match between um, Detroit Pershing takes on Hazel Park. That winner's taking on Warren Lincoln. Ferndale U takes on Detroit Osborne. That winner takes on Ferndale. So, when I look and study this district, and I think this is a really unique situation here, and I talked to Juan Rickman about this, the coach of Ferndale, during the, um, you know, during media day. And he told me he didn't want to go to Detroit Pershing for the district. And I wondered why, you know, and I, and, and obviously you look at everything that's going on around them. Um, you know, you look at the, I mean, you got to look at a course safety, you know, you got to look at, do they have a trainer there? Do they have a um, coolers there? I mean, like you really got to look at safety, especially, you know, when I'm not being mean here, but especially when we're in Wayne County, um, you know, they, I mean, I've seen schools that have had a history of it, of not having that. So, I, Rickman, I, I talked to Rickman about it. I know he was very concerned about it. Um, he's also an athletic director at Ferndale as well. And I know he was really worried about it. And then you look at the basketball side of things, you know, the realization having to go through Warren Lincoln in the district final. And Warren Lincoln's had a nice year, but they've had some questionable losses. Along the way, as is Ferndale. I mean, you look at Ferndale, yeah, they play in the rugged red. They play in the always tough red. But they've had some questionable losses. Um, but we talked about this last year with Ferndale, and they won a Division II state championship. So they're deemed a the number two seed. They're either going to get Ferndale University or Detroit Osborne. Of course, university's having a really rough year. Um, I know they were a very young team this year. But, you know, they've, they've been competitive in, in some games this year, but they really haven't, um, they haven't been as, I, I've been really surprised, you know what I mean, considering, you know, some of the struggles they've had um, defensively. Uh, and then, you know, obviously Detroit Osborne, they've been up and down this year, um, which is interesting. I mean, like, obviously with Detroit Osborne, um, you know, Obviously, with them, they're having a nice year. They're having an all right year. Um, but they haven't played the schedule as Ferndale has. Um, so, looking at this bracket, and I'm thinking to myself here, Detroit Pershing should get by Hazel Park. Being at home, Hazel Park's really, I mean, they've been up and down this year. And then, 
a possible semifinal match between Detroit Pershing and Warren Lincoln. That's really appetizing. I think that's got to upset Trapper and over. I think Warren Lincoln's got to be wearing that game. I really do. Um, I think Ferndale most likely will see Detroit Osborne if they get by Ferndale U. Um, which I think Ferndale should roll over both teams and get to the final. I mean, we're really seriously talking maybe Ferndale versus um, Warren Lincoln um, district final. We're really talking about it. So we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll see what we'll see what happens in that matchup. I mean, we will um we'll see how it goes. I mean, it'll be interesting to see how um how that matchup will go and everything like that. Um so we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll see what happens um how that one goes. So I mean, it'll be interesting to see how um that one goes. So, and then on the other side here, I mean, like Ferndale, Warren, Lincoln here, um, it'll be very interesting to see how it goes, and we'll see. We'll see. Um, and then, and then, and then let's look at the uh, Mother District here matchup here. Um, then you have um, Harper Woods, Chandler Park, uh, District 58 or at Harper Woods, Chandler Park. Um, It'll be interesting to see how this one goes. Um, you know, I think it'll be interesting between um, Detroit East English Village Prep versus um, St. Clair Shore South Lake. That winner's taking on Harper Woods. Then they have Detroit Denby Tech versus East Point. Um, and that winner's taking on, um, that winner's taking on um, Chandler Park. So... Looking at that district, it'll be really interesting to see how that matchup goes. And, you know, Harper Woods, they're having a nice year. I mean, they're having a good year. Um, it'll be really interesting to see how um, that one goes. Um, it's, inter it's, it's, it's interesting to see how, um, you know, that will go. And obviously, you know, I think it'll be it'll be something to really watch for. Um, you know, but Harper Woods right now, I think's got the best part of the draw. I mean, they really do. Um, they're taking on um they're taking on either Harper Woods. I mean, they're I mean Harper Woods Chandler Park Academy's got the toughest part of the draw. Cause I think Detroit East English Village Prep I think they're they're as dangerous as anybody in that district. I think they're as dangerous as anybody. So we'll see what happens. We'll see we'll see what happens in that district. I mean, it'll be really interesting to see how this goes. I mean, it'll be really interesting to see how this one goes. Um and then on the other side, you know, but as I mentioned, whoever plays Detroit East English Village Prep is gonna have the dangerous round. I think it's going to be. And Chandler Park's got that. Um, And Chandler Park Academy's got that. And they're going to play it. Um, so Harper Woods has the best shot in the draw. They're the two seed. Um, We'll see what happens. I mean, we'll see what happens there. But I think, honestly, um, you know, it's, it's an interesting district. Um, I, I don't trust Salt Lake here in this district. Um, so it'd be really interesting to see how this one goes, but Harper Woods, I would have to say, has to be the favorite in this district, even though it's at, um, Chandler Park, um, but I think Harper Woods is a team that really, they're gonna do wonders, so we'll see what happens. Um, District 30 at Adams, um, you got Stony Creek versus Utica Eisenhower, um, that winner's taking on Utica. Um, Rochester versus Romeo, and then you have Rochester, and then that winner's taking on Adams. Um, this will be held at Adams. Um, how do I describe this district? How do I describe it? Um, Adams should be the favorite in this district, despite them getting the number two seed. 
And here's why I'm saying this. You look at Adams. The schedule they play. They play in the red. You look at Utica. Utica's a senior heavy team. Undefeated right now. We'll know a lot about them when they play Warren D. LaSalle. Um, so when I look at Adams, so when I look at Adams, obviously this is a team that's got a lot of questions. Peter Kardashian, William G., um, Trenton Lagarde. But it's obvious to me that Kardashian has to stay on the floor. And I watched that game against Stony Creek where when he was not on the floor, they struggled. Now, people say, well, obviously, they struggled against Stony Creek because they had that win against Ferndale, which was a very emotional high for them. But how can you not be motivated when you're at a big, at Oakland University, at the arena, big time school, going up against, um, going up against, um, you know, go, I mean, taking on one of your arch rivals, um, and you have a really hard time with them for three quarters, only to survive and win that game. I mean, I would be very concerned with Adams right now. I really would be. And their schedule, they got North Farmington coming up. I mean, like, to close out the, um, the league schedule. I mean, like, but I'm telling you, when I look at North, when I look at Adams, and Adams to me, they really, they really have, um, you know, I think Adams is a team that really has a good shot here to do well in this district. They can win this district despite them having home, home, home court. Um, I don't think Utica would scare anybody. I just don't see them scaring anybody. I know how bad Utica Eisenhower wants Adams, considering what happened to them last year. Buzzer beater by William G. at their place, three-point shot. Um, I know how bad they want him back. And they have a really good path, I think, to do it. Now, they got to get by Utica. Which obviously not, and all that depends if they get by Stony Creek. Stony Creek, I thought, showed me some improvement. I mean, they did show me some improvement, but still, I mean, Gideon Beers had a really nice game against Adams. He had a really nice game against him. Trent Lagar, I mean, like, um, Trey Walker got into foul trouble early, and that led to Gideon Beers' um, breakout game. I think Gideon Beers is your future point guard over there. I mean, he's starting to click. Then you have Tyree Smith over there, um, who's really, you know, Tyree Smith is really, um, has really started to play on his own. He's really starting to play really good basketball. Um, he's going to be your shooting guard of the future over there at Stoney. So there is pieces being built at Stoney. But the question for me is, it comes down to result play. Result play has always been the key for them all season long. I mean, it's been, everybody looks at Stony Creek and say, okay, you look at this team, you look at year two under Coach Jeff Owen, you kind of expect them to have a better record, to turn everything around. It hasn't really been that way for them. Really hasn't. But they got a chance here if they can beat Utica Eisenhower to do some damage. <laughs> now, albeit Utica Eisenhower, we know it's got some really good players. I mean, Preston Crumb, they got <coughs> they got others. But I think it'll be interesting to see how um to see how um this team does. And for Stony Creek. Um, for Stony Creek, um, it'll be interesting to see how, um, how this team does. I mean, it, it'll be interesting to see how, um, how, um, Stony Creek does. I mean, especially considering the season they've had, it's been a rough year for them. So, 
we'll see what happens with Stoney. I mean, it'll be really interesting to see how the Cougars do um, this season, considering where they're at. So, we'll see. And then you look at Rochester. Rochester is starting to turn things around a little bit. I mean, they've won three straight games. Um, riding a lot of confidence heading in that in their match with Romeo. Star, the, the guard match, the point guard match is going to be really interesting between Max Small and Aiden Tate. It'll be interesting to see how this one goes. Because Adams, because, because, Roger, because Adams awaits the winner. And we know how good they are. Romeo's had a habit of collapsing in the postseason. I mean, it hap almost happened last year against Stony Creek. It happened against Utica Eisenhower. Um, so there's a lot of, there has to be a lot of pressure on Marv Cushenberry to, to get this thing turned around, you know, to get them into the district final. Um, Rochester is a golden opportunity here for them. But for Rochester, it's a golden opportunity for them. Because they, I don't know if R Romeo has an answer for Jake Tandy. I, I just don't know. The key is Tandy's going to have to play really well for them to happen, for this to work. If he does, I think this is going to be interesting to see how this one goes. So, we'll see. But I look at this district, everybody says Adams, Utica. I don't necessarily see it that way. I think Utica gets upset either by um, Stony Creek or Utica Eisenhower in the um, semifinals. And I see <clears throat> either an Adams versus Utica or Utica Eisenhower or Stony Creek district final. Stony Creek can play with Adams. I mean, they can really, they can certainly play with Adams. So we'll see how this one goes. But I'm telling you, I think honestly, when I look at that district, I think Adams has to be the favorite, not Utica. And everybody will say, well, you're on crack about Utica. I'm telling you, I don't trust Utica one bit in that district. I really don't. District 29, this one's at Troy Athens, Seahome, Bloomfield Hills. Um, that winner's taking on Birmingham Brother Rice, and then Troy versus Troy Athens. Um, kind of a familiar storyline here. Um, Seahome and Bloomfield Hills will be the third time they'll be playing each other. In about three weeks, Troy and Troy Athens, same thing. Troy went and beat Troy Athens pretty convincingly at their building. Um, obviously, Chase Kuyper had a nice game. Mason Parker played well, and then Dar and then Johnny Whiteside played well. Um, they did get Griffin LeBay out of his out of um, made him struggle. He ended up getting teed up in that game. Um, so when I look at and then on the other side, you have Seaholm and Bloompia Hills. And you really look at Seaholm and you look at that matchup. And you look at Seaholm. And um, you look at the Maples. And the Maples are a team that, you know, obviously, you know, in wake of everything that's happened to Mike DeGeter, um... They're still a solid team. I mean, like, they still have a defensive first team. But there's going to be a lot of questions for this team heading in the offseason. A lot of questions. And taking on a Bloopy Hills team who is right now a team that's on the upward trajectory. I played Deron Mason and uh, Philip Muhammad. I mean, Mason had 31 points in their loss against, in their overtime loss against Harper Woods. Um... And then you have Philip Muhammad, who's a player who I think is going to be a a very good player for them in the future, along with Carter Canfield. Um, so for um, for Coach um, Brian Canfield, it'll be interesting to see how this one goes, and it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. So we'll see what happens. Um. And then you have district number, um, dish, and then, of course, you look at, uh, obviously, on the other side, you have Birdman, Brother Rice, and Troy. Um, you know, yeah, that's a possibility of a district final there. So 
we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, it'll be a real interesting district um, district final if this were the case. But Troy, Troy, Athens, that can be really interesting considering how, how short the rims are. Um, considering how, um, you know, everything, how it's gone. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, but everything looks like it's going to be a Birmingham Bar of the Rice Troy district final. But I think Troy's got a shot. I mean, they're going to have to play really well. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, district 28, this is at... Waterford Kettering, you got Lake Orion, Waterford Kettering. That winner's taking on Waterford Mott. And then you have um, Clarkson versus Pontiac, and that winner's taking on Avondale. So, it's interesting. Waterford Mott right now is the early favorite in this district. But I can't trust Mott in this district. They got a very good plan, Jacoby Manyweather. I don't know if they've been tested by the by an OA team yet. I don't think I don't think it might see an OA team yet this year. Um Kettering we know is always scrappy under um coach Steve Emmert. Lake Orion's been up and down this year. Um so it'll be really interesting to see how um how this team goes. Um I think it'll be interesting to see where um where Lake Orion um you know, where this team, like, plays out. So, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, we'll see what happens um, in this scenario. So, we'll see. Um, and then, on the other side, you have Clarkson Avondale. I mean, Clarkson Pontiac first round. Andrew Myers' is first um, meeting against... Um, you know, against his former team. It's an interesting matchup, to say the least. It'll be really interesting to see how this one goes. So, it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. And, you know, I think Clarkston, obviously, with the struggles they've had this year, you still would have to favor him over Pontiac, even over Avondale. I mean, you know, with the way that that team's been. So, I think... Waterford Mott's got to be very careful if it's Lake Orion. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. But everybody says Clarkson Waterford Mott District Final. Um, and Clarkson, I mean Waterford Mott favored to win that. It, don't be surprised if Lake Orion's in there. Really wouldn't. I mean they're kind of in a similar spot to where they were at to the to when the girls program was at when they played Rochester. So, we'll see how that one goes. We really will. Um, and then the District 27 is that Grand Blank. You have um, Holly taking on Lapeer. That winner's taking on Davison. And then Oxford taking on Grand Blank. Um, Holly, it, it's, it's going to likely be Holly against Davison in the next round. Um, Holly, when the last time those two teams played, um, Lapeer won that game, but Holly wasn't at full sprint strength with Anthony Simmons. I think they're going to be at full strength now, and I think Holly's going to roll in that one. Um, And then they'll probably play Davison. That should be a heck of a game, I think. It'll be a tight game. It'll be a close game. But I think Davison's has got enough weapons there. Um, I think they're going to get to the district final in that one. And then you have Oxford and Grand Blank. Um, it's interesting to see how this one goes. Because this is not a good matchup for this is not a good matchup for um for Oxford. Grand Blank struggled earlier in the year. They've gotten better. It's at Grand Blank. It's on their home floor. Um it'll be interesting to see how Oxford does in this district. I mean, Jake Champagne's gonna have to score more than thirty. They have a chance in this game. And then they need an effort from Luke Stofan. They need efforts from both Katie brothers. Um, they're going to need a lot if they're going to pull. want to think about pulling off this on the upset against Grand Blank. I mean, because 
Grand Blank, we know, has got the history around them. They're athletic. They're talented. Um, played a tough schedule. Just went to Muskegon recently. Got crushed. Um, so, a lot of challenges await for um, for um, Oxford in their district over at Grand Blank. So, a lot of challenges awaiting them. District 25 at Lakeland. You got Wall Lake Northern taking on Lakeland. That winner's taking on Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, then you have um, Wall Lake Central versus Wall Lake Western. That winner's taking on West Bloomfield. Um, a lot of people looking at Orchard Lake St. Mary's path, and they got an easy path to the district final. I mean, they really do. Um, and, and I think they're going to get there, have that easy path. But the matchup between Wall Lake Central and West Bloomfield is really interesting. Because West Bloomfield, they've had a heck of a year this year under Coach Arnett Jordan. I mean, Drew Wilson's having an incredible year. Um, Corey, Chris Britton going to the bench was, you know, insane. Um, sacrifice, he was a starter before, going to the six-man um, role this season. Um... I think this is going to be an, a, a I think it's going to be a district where I think West Bluefield is more athletic as athletically enough gifted to guard against Orchard Lake St. Mary's. I think they're going to guard them here. Um and I did make a couple bold statements on my podcast about it. Um and I said this many times is um and I said this many times is I think West Bluefield's got a chance to beat Orchard Lake St. Mary's. And I think they got a great chance to beat him for a couple reasons. I know Orchard Lake St. Mary's is, is star heavy. You look at players like Jane Savory. You look at um, Will Smythe on that team. You look at Crichton's on that team. Obviously, everybody knows about Trey, Trey McKinney. Um, but I think West Bloomfield, they got size. They got playmakers. Drew Wilson is, is an instant star in the making. I think Drew Wilson has a breakout game at Lakeland. I, I, I really think Drew Wilson's going to have a breakout game at, uh, against um, Orchard Lake St. Mary's. So it wouldn't surprise me if Orchard Lake St. Mary's gets upset by West Bloom. It really wouldn't surprise me. But, you know, a lot of people are going to look at St. Mary's as a favorite. And they're well coaching Coach Todd Colbert. Um, but West Bloom is well coaching under, under Jordan. Um, We'll see how this one goes, but I think it, everything points to be a West Bloomfield, um, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's District Final, and I'll be at Wall Lake Central. I didn't like how they looked against Water Vermont, but they'll be well on their way to um, winning the Lakes Valley Championship outright. So imagine this having a Koa Red Champ, the Catholic League Champ, and then you have the um, Lakes Valley Champ all in one district. So. It'll be really interesting to see how that one goes in that district. District 24, um, this will be at Laboni Stevenson. Suffered Arson Tech takes on Frank Laboni Franklin. That winner's taking on North Farmington. And then Farmington versus Redford Thurston. That winner's taking on Laboni Stevenson. Um, when I look at that district, um, Farmington had a great opportunity to at least clinch the number two seed. And then they played a Saturday game in the 313 Classic against Livonia Franklin. Against the War Michigan Collegiate. And ended up losing that game by 20 points. That cost them big time. That cost them dearly. Because instead of having a two seed and not having to play till Wednesday, now you're gonna have to be. Now you're going to have to play on that Monday against Redford Thurston with the right to having to play the two seed. So they kind of, so Coach Byron Johnson's team kind of really screwed themselves over um, losing that game by 20 points. And that's not a good sign heading into the postseason considering the way you lost that game to Warren Michigan Collegiate. That's not a good sign. So that could they could be in some trouble. I really do. Now they could win that game and knock off Lavoni Stevenson and get the district final where North Farmington will likely await them. And North Farmington has started to get their act together again. 
I mean, good win against um, out west, um, and then they had a good win the other night against Detroit Community. So, North Farns is starting to get their act together again, which is a good sign for them going forward. So, we'll see what happens there. We'll see what happens. But North Farns right now is the favorite in that district um, going forward there. And then our last but not least, the district over at um, 20, at um, Groves, you have um, you have um, Oak Park taking on Royal Oak. That winner's taking on Groves. And then Warren Mott against Berkeley. If you're Coach Joe Sermo, you got a very good situation here. Because, you know, you got the two seed. You get the weaker matchup against Warren Mott. And you got a good path to the district final. Oak Park was injury riddled this year. They were injury riddled and they had to play, you know, and, and you look at that and they played in the rugged red. And if this team's healthy, if they get by Royal Oak, then you're looking at a possibility of having to play Groves in the fir- in the um, district semifinal. That's a very difficult matchup for Groves considering where they've been through. But Groves has really shown they can play with the big boys of the Red. They really have shown they can play with anybody in the Red. And that tells you something right there to where that team can really, you know, with that team, they could really be a team that could be a, um, a dangerous juggernaut. It'll be interesting to see how that matchup goes. If Oak Park were to get by Royal Oak, which they should, considering Royal Oak this year has been up and down. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this matchup goes between the Knights and the Ravens. And then if the Knights were to win that take on Groves, that could be a really, really good game between those two teams. So if you're Groves, I would be very weary. I would be really, really weary when you look at that matchup. And then you have Berkeley on the other side. Um, they know that they're going to see a red opponent in the, in the district final. They know it. I mean, don't get by Warren Mott. They should get by Warren Mott. And if they don't, it's a disappointing year for Coach Joe Sermo. You had everything right there set up for you. You're the two seed, no play to Wednesday. Um, everything's set up well for you. So we'll see how that one goes. We we shall. Um, let's go now from that is my take on the boys districts here. Um, let's go to the girls districts here. They just released the formula. Um I put the formula on the girls' basketball thought page. Um, when I look at the district, um, when I look at everybody's situations, Pontiac, of course, we talked about them. <coughs> I mean, they're not in, um, they're not going to be competing in the postseason this year, which is unfortunate. Um, um, Oak Park, they're locked in as the B team in District 21. Um, which means they would play Southfield A&T in the first round. Um, that winner is going to see um, Detroit Mumford in the semifinals, um, which is interesting because I think I think A&T got a really good draw here, but it'll be a tough chore for Oak Park in this district considering um, where they've been this year. So we'll see what happens where they're at. I mean, we'll see where, where they're at. Um... Oak Park's going to have it really tough in their district. Ferndale University is locked in as a D team. Um, they would have to play Detroit Henry Ford if this were the scenario right now. Um, if they get by that, and then they would have to play Birmingham Detroit Country Day. So it's a tall task for Coach Brianna Rowe and her, and her Falcons. It'd be really, really interesting to see how this one goes. So it'll be tough to see how that one goes. And then speaking of Ferndale University, there's Ferndale here. Um, Ferndale's had a nice year. I mean, I'm a little surprised why a lot of a lot of the gold teams are decided not to play them, especially Avondale. Um, 
they're the two seed for now, but they're in a tight race with the with Warren Link and King Academy. Um, <clears throat> if they do get jumped, they're going to be the seed team in the district. Um, sets up a match with Troy Henry Ford. Um, and then they could play Birmingham Detroit Country Day. Um, you know, I mean, like in the um, they could play Country Day in the uh, semifinals if that were the case. But I think when you look at Ferndale's path, they're better off as the two seed for a couple reasons. Because the Eagles are a team that really, um, <clears throat> the Eagles are a team that could really do some damage. And I think if they want to showcase who they really are, you know, you get the two seed, you get Detroit Country Day, a heck of a game, you get the district final, and you've had a good year. Um, Coach Keith Paris is building something over there at Ferndale. He really is. So we'll see what happens over there. Avondale, they're in um they're locked as the 18 for the district, which means they'll be the two seed. They'll play on that Wednesday against either Seahome, Troy, or Bloomfield Hills. Either way, it's a tough match for Avondale. I mean, considering the injuries they've had, Sasha McClellan's done for the year with the um, injury. Um you know, so that's a tough blow for Coach Roy Christman. Um, so injuries have really derailed Avondale's season this year. It really has. So We'll see what happens to them going forward. Farmington, locked as the B team. Means they're going to play their arch rival North Farmington in the first round, which means they're likely going to get sentenced by West Blue, having to play West Blue in the semifinals if they win. Um, tall, mat, tall order for Coach Nally Nolak's team. They've really struggled all year. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, I think it'll be interesting to see how. This goes. So, we'll see. Troy Athens, they're in District 28. Um, they got an outside shot being seeded. But for now, I think they're going to be locked in as the C team. Um, they're going to play. Um, they're going to most likely means they're going to play against against Seahome, Bloomby Hills, or Troy. I don't think anybody wants to see. Um, I don't think anybody wants to see. Um, Troy Athens in the first round. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Troy Athens is going to be a tough out for anybody, especially in that district. So we'll see. Adams, Adams is locked in as the B team in the district. Um, means they're going to play Utica Eisenhower. Um, that winner is going to take on, um, you know, the winner, that winner is going to take on um, either Stony Creek or Romeo in the district semifinals. Um, I mean, Adams played them tough. I mean, Adams played them really tough. I mean, so it'll be interesting to see. They're going to put, I mean, like, so it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. I mean, it'll be really interesting to see how this one goes. But it'll be tough. It'll be tough for sure. Um, Berkeley, um, they're the A team in the district over there in their district. They host it, which means they're going to have to play, um, they would have to play um, Redford Thurston on that Monday, but then they would have to see Detroit Renaissance the District semifinals, which is really difficult. Um, so it'll be really difficult for them. Um, so we'll see how that one goes. So it'll be interesting to see. Troy, um, you know they're they're having a, a nice year. Had a really rough loss to Berkeley. Um, they're bound for one of the two seeds right now. If they don't get seeded, they're the B team for the district. Means they have to play Troy Athens. Um, so they're right now playing for seeding right now. Um, if they keep winning, they're going to be seeded. If not, they're going to likely be the B team in the district. So we'll see how that one goes. A and T, they have an outside shot of being seeded. Um, right now they're the D team, which means they'll play. Um, They'll play Oak Park in the first round. Um, and then they would play Detroit Mumper in the semis. Good situation for Coach Akita Coltrane, despite not being seeded, if you're the D team. Just a really good opportunity for A&T to really make some noise in that district, considering you have Berkeley and Detroit Renaissance 
most likely in the same side of the district. So it'll be interesting to see how that one goes in that one. North Farmington, same situation as Farmington. There's a seed team in the district that means to play Farmington in the first round. And then that winner gets to go play West Bloomfield. And I know how that's going to feel. I mean, North's had a nice year. I mean, they've had a really good year. But the playoff scenario, basically sentenced by the formula. Um, tough situation how that one's going to go. Um, Groves. I mean, you really look at Groves, obviously. Um, they're locked as the A team, which means they're going to probably play, um, you know, they're probably going to play, um, Warren, they could see Warren Cousin on the district semifinals. Um, I mean, like, it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. Um, it would be interesting. I mean, I think Groves has been to a lot of tough places this year. They've been to Harper Woods. They've been to Lake Orion. They've been to Royal Oak. Um, they've been to Seaholm. Um, so they won't be intimidated going to Warren Cousin. They really won't. So, but it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. Um, Seahome's path, obviously, the top seed for now. Troy's right there. So is Boompy Hills. If they don't get seed, they're the B team, which means they have to play Troy Athens. Um, so, for Seahome, it's just for them, for Coach Chris Manchester's team. Just keep winning, everything's fine. So, we'll see. We'll see how that one goes. Harper Woods, um... You know, they're in District 60. They're the top seed in the district for now. East Point and Harper Wood, Chandler Park are within striking distance. Um, if, they're not, if, they're, if they don't get to either the B team in the district, um, which will be rough having to play on that Monday. Uh, actually, it's a 14 district, so over there, which means they will. all these teams are playing on Wednesday. So it's a four-teamer there, so we'll see how that one goes. I mean, we will see how things go over there, and we'll see. District 28 at Bloomfield Hills. Uh, for Bloomfield Hills, they're in District 28. They're bound for the for, to be seeded right now with Troy and um, Seahome. Uh, they do play Seahome during the season, which is great, which is huge for them. Um, Bloomfield Hills did lose to Seahome earlier in the year at LCA. So, you know, so right now Seahome would have the edge in the tiebreaker. If they don't get seeded, they're the B team in the district, which means they went to play Troy Athens. Um... So, it'll be interesting to see, considering that Bloopy Hills has one more meeting with Seaholm um, to close out the season. Um, so, we'll see where they're at um, going forward. Royal Oak, they're going to likely be seeded. It'll be them or Warren Cousineau that gets top seed um, in their district. I don't see them falling within the um, seed lines of this district. So, but like I said, they're looking at a collision course with Warren. I'm um, in the district final if things go right. Now, Groves could upset Warren Cousineau. So if I'm them, I'd be very careful. So we'll see how that one goes. So when it comes to the, um, with the Ravens, but good spot for Royal Oak in their district. So we'll see how that one goes. Then we look at Oxford. I mean, they're in district 32, locked in as a two seed. Um, Likely going to see Grand Blank, um, you know, in the district final. Um, they're going to probably wait Davison first. Davison and Oxford, we know those two teams have played earlier in the year. Um, Oxford won that one 42-34 back in, um, on December the 7th. So it'll be very interesting to see how the second time around goes. I think Davison's been a little bit weaker, though. They've been this year. I think Oxford's gotten much better. It really improved, especially Allison Huffstedler. Um, Peyton Richter also, um, Mia Champagne's your wild card in this district, so we'll see how that one goes. Lake Orion and Clarkson are both basically intertwined. Um, Lake Orion would see Waterford Kettering first. Um, Clarkson with Waterford Mott. Clarkson would have a tougher matchup, um, considering when you look at based on record. But when I look at that district, District 29, it's going to definitely be a Wolves-Dragons district final. Both teams split the regular season series. Um, obviously, Clarkson with the injured Eliana Roback. Um, Clarkson's not the same team without Eliana Roback. And, you know, it showed why. Um, but obviously, you know, Brooklyn Colbert really benefits to having Roback on the floor. Um, so, 
you know, for coach for Coach Aaron Goodnow, it's going to be the key for them is going to be is Ken Clarkson um compete, you know, Ken Clarkson overcome the rollback injury um before they get to the district final. I think they will. Um, so I think they're going to be fine. In Lake Orion's case here, they're starting to get back to where um, they were earlier in the year, and I think that's a good sign um, considering where they've been when they've lost six straight. I mean, Izzy Walensky starting to become easy, scoring easy again. Um, Ellie Britz had, um, has, has played really well for this team. Um, Charlotte Pavlosky has had moments where she's looked really good. Nevea Woods has been doing really good rebounding. Um, and then Ryan Palachak, you know what I mean, has always been that um, has been that X factor for the, for this team. I mean, like Lake Orion, you know they. I mean, like they're starting five. It they're starting five solid. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, I mean this is if Lake Orion can find that team that wasn't back in December, then I'll tell you what, Coach Bob Bridges' team's gonna be scary. And I think you know, do I think this is a team that? What I would see him in the regional final, probably not. But but Lake Orion definitely, they're believing in each other. And I'll tell you what, right now the way they've been playing, they found ways to win close games. And when you win close games late in the year, you know that's going to help you, especially when you get in the postseason. Um, so Coach Bob Bridges' team's been battle tested, um, and I think Lake Orion they got a great chance to 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 three peat. Um, as district champions, so they got a great opportunity awaiting them right now. Um, just getting ready for the postseason, so we'll see what happens there with them. Um, let's go now to um, to Stony Creek here. Um, Stony Creek, um, top seed in um, in their district. They host the district. They haven't looked as good as I thought when I watched their game against Adams. They didn't look really good, um, but they did find a way to survive and win that game. Obviously, you look at players like Ivan Alaj. You look at um, Sarah LaPrairie. You look at Merrick Schlaubach. Um, and also, Stony Creek's beaten everybody in their district at least once this season, um, which gives them an advantage, but it also tells me that they could be the hunted in that district despite having home court. Um, I think a team that would give them problems is Rochester because... Rochester, I think, would give anybody problems considering with their height with Alice Max and Kylie Robinson. Um, they got to get enough guard play. I mean, like, I know that they have the length, the, um, the athleticism to keep teams down and the, uh, keep teams in low-scoring games. So it'll be interesting to see where Rochester's at. But I think when I look at that district over there at Stony Creek, I think Rochester, to me, is the most dangerous team in that district. And there's several reasons why I think they will be in that district. And then last but not least, West Bloomfield. Um, they're probably going to either North Farmington or Farmington in that um, semifinal. And then a Catholic League opponent, either Farmington Hills Mercy or Birmingham Marion in the um, district final. Um, so West Bloomfield, you know, kind of got a nice pass um, in the district. They should have no issue in their district. Um, I'd be shocked if Mercy or Marion gives them problems. Um, I would be really surprised if that happened. But those are the matchups for now. Now, all this could change. I mean, considering, you know, we mentioned last week here in the pod that um, on the boys' side, I think, with Farmington and, um, you know, get I mean, losing their game on Saturday to Warren Michigan Collegiate. And um, that ended up costing them the number two seed, um, which means now Farmington will have to play on that Monday. So, these district matchups are far from final. Of course, the match will be announced on Sunday um, around 8.30 in the morning. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward um, when it comes to district talk here for the postseason. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw at 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OAA. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next week. Everybody, take care. See you then. God bless.